Good morning and welcome to St. Pat's Online as we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy, most sacred body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, more commonly known as Corpus Christi. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we come together on this beautiful feast, let us remember the import of this sacrament. It is about healing. It is about giving thanks. It is about blessing. It is about praise. It is the source and summit of our life as church. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and on earth peace, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you and bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for forty years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you, he made you feel hunger, he fed you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but on man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. Oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord Jesus. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord Jerusalem. Jesus. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel, his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that, though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I shall raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we began our liturgy this morning, I made reference to a statement by the Fathers of the Second Vatican Council. The Eucharist is source and summit of our life as Christians, communally and individually. That needs a good deal of unpacking, as they say. What I'd like to do is to go back to look at the beginnings, how come we are here, we are gathered, breaking bread and sharing a cup. Two seminal processes began when Jesus bequeathed life to the early disciples. The first one is they began to tell the story. They remembered his teachings. They spoke of the events. They shared what they called good news the word. Secondly, and very clearly and very early, they started to celebrate this ritual event that Jesus invited them to celebrate. We have texts in the scriptures which we would call institutional te or texts of institution where we can see how Jesus said, this is what I want you to do to remember me. The word Eucharist it's a very common Greek word. It simply means to give, th uh, the Greek uh, word was to give thanks, Eucharistia. To give thanks to whom, to what, for what? The Eucharist as this um, event became known was giving thanks to God for the action in Jesus Christ, the redemptive, the healing work of Christ through his life, death and resurrection. That's the beginnings. History has not always been kind 
to our celebration of the Eucharist. But part of the genius of our Catholic tradition is the adaptability, the way we've been able to maintain the essence under different circumstances. Part of the work of the Second Vatican Council was to look at some of the unkindness done to the Eucharist in liturgical ritual and so forth. It can get lost, it can get buried. The Eucharist is an event, an event that builds up the community and expresses the life of the community. More than anything else, it is action. On this day, in the Office of Readings, if you happen to be reading the prayer of the church, you'll find a text from St. Thomas Aquinas, written in the 13th century. It's a text that expresses the very heart of the Eucharist. St. Thomas says, no sacrament has more healing power than the Eucharist, to forgive sins and to build up the Christian life. Here we find an example of history being unkind to the Eucharist. Somehow or other, there arose within the Catholic tradition the thought that you had to go to confession before you came to this healing sacrament. If there's nothing less to heal, what's the purpose of the sacrament? The Eucharist is the sacrament of reconciliation par excellence. Yes, if you've been about doing the most horrible, wicked things, for goodness sake, tidy up your life. But otherwise, if you're just an ordinary sinner, you need the Eucharist. If you're not, you don't need the Eucharist. Don't bother. I have an image from my own life which I find very helpful to remember. My father, before he died, for the last 20 or so years of his life, 30 years of his life, had a disease of the hands called Jupitron's contracture, which causes a clawing effect. Doctors tried various operations and he ended up with a very ugly hand with two fingers amputated and lots of skin grafts. I used to go and celebrate the mass with him in his little room before he died. And when he reached out that ugly hand to take the Eucharist and said, Amen, that spoke volumes to me of what Eucharist is about. It's not about being beautiful. It's not about having your house in order and then coming to the Eucharist. It's about recognizing that there are parts of your life, all of us, that need healing. And that's why we reach out our hands and say amen to the bread of life. I invite you to think of Eucharist as an event, as action, as full of healing and thanksgiving and blessing and praise as we come together in a community now. There's a certain irony in saying this now when we're social distancing and separated and all the rest of it, but that is the heart of what we celebrate today and it's as well for us to remember it. Let us pause for a moment in terms of an expression of Eucharist for what would you most like to give thanks at this time or for whom? Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Praise God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. He humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of all my sins. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name. For our good Grant your church, O Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for the Last Supper, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, re-establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the hosts of the angels cry out and without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all those who minister your gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Mary MacKillop and all the saints who've done your will throughout the ages, we may become co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin to protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body, drink your blood, let it not bring us condemnation, health, mind, and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for everlasting life. Blood of Christ, keep us safe for everlasting.
Grant, O oh Lord, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in this sacrament in our present age by our reception of the precious body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives with you in the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.